Доброго дня, шановні пані. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. Ukraine crisis media center continues its work, and we greet everyone who joined us here and online. The topic of the next press briefing is efficient state regulation of pension savings, risks and prospects. We are giving the floor to the moderator, Natalia Vasilovich, member of National Interest Protection and, and the deputy of AIDS Convocation of the Verkhovna Rada. Uh, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. Last month we started our public discussion about uh, uh, pension saving system. This is very in popular topic now. This topic is supported by the government, and uh, we have hope that the second level of the system will be introduced. But we got many questions from people who are afraid to lose their savings. They are afraid to lose their money that they accumulated. So who regulates uh, the non-state funds? Everyone is afraid of uh, this title that they are non-state entities and that the state doesn't have any relation to these funds. In accordance with current legislation, it is envisaged that uh, there is a state oversight of this market. So they are not the participants of um, uh, the market, but they are the regulator of the market. And they are um, National Bank and National Commission on uh, Securities. And uh, uh, today's discussion is about efficient re state regulation of pension savings, risks, and prospects. Please join us, join our today's discussion on our platform that is called AMS, and also on UCMC page. You may watch broadcast of our public discussion, and you may leave your comments and questions to our speakers. We will have uh, such speakers today. These are um, officials and uh, people's deputies, members of commissions, and experts in the sphere of pension savings. And uh, uh, I would like to give the floor to Yaroslav Sidorovich. He is an analyst of uh, AMS Network. He is a mathematician and a person who is really professional. And uh, when we are speaking about pensions, everyone think about social sphere, about expenditures. But this accumulation pension system, this is a sector of economy. So Yaroslav, we would like to give the floor to you. Uh, to have this information about the current state of the market. Maybe you will show how this regulation really works and how it is done in the world. Please, you are given the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. This is a nice day before holidays. Now I will turn on my presentation, and I would like to say that the introduction of accumulation system of pension funds, this is a key issue. This is the important issue of trust. First of all, this is the trust to the market that citizens trust the system. and. Uh, the trust is built, and it should be built. Do you see my presentation? Yes, the, it is on the screen. This presentation, I'm going to start it. Why we should do this? We have obligations. Ukraine has its obligations. 
uh, in the association agreement and in the plans of actions uh, on implementation of the association agreement. And this is the improvement of the system of patient savings and implementation of uh, uh, Directive uh, 2016 uh, 2341. We have mono majority, and in the campaign of people's uh, of uh, servants of the people party, they said that they want to introduce second level of uh, the system, and um, uh, the word of the president as of 9th of November 2019, there is a point about introduction of uh, obligatory professional accumulation system for. Uh, workers in accordance with the first and the second list. And uh, the strategy of development of financial sector was approved, uh, strategy 2025, and by decision of the National Bank also. The Ministry of Finance participated in the development of this document, I mean the Ministry of Finance, uh, Economy, uh, and the, the Cabinet of Ministers and the National Commission on uh, uh, Securities and uh, Securities Market, and uh, also um, um, this level should be introduced until 31st of December this year. Uh, some work has been done. We have some draft laws on this. Unfortunately, they were not adopted for some reasons, but we have uh, 2683 that was introduced by the deputies and and alternative draft law 2683.1 uh, and changes to tax code concerning um, uh, accumulation of pension funds and the cabinet of ministers introduced the draft law about accumulation of uh, profession um, concerning the professional accumulation system they introduced this uh, draft law and they will consider this draft law next year I will go back. I analyze these draft laws a little bit. So first three draft laws, they should be improved and they will be introduced by people's deputies. And we know that many people from the National Commission on Securities participated in this work and uh, some considerations were provided uh, by the budget committee and the committee of the committees of the Verkhovna Rada and the chief expert uh, um, office and uh, there are some aspects still uh, that uh, uh, need to be improved and our today's discussion will contribute to this to improve these draft laws to make them of quality i mentioned during the previous seminar that we have the law as of 8 of uh, june 2011 and uh, that uh, provision of funds to the accumulation pension system uh, will be um, introduced starting from the year in which there will be a budget without deficit, if we are speaking about pension fund. Uh, this, uh, uh, at the same time, uh, on the 3rd of October 2017, uh, uh, they adopted the annex to the law 2148 about uh, this, uh, um, uh, they said that this will be introduced starting 1st uh, January 2018, and uh, this is still not introduced. And in transitional uh, provisions, they said that the Cabinet of Ministers should have introduced some uh, draft law uh, to uh, coordinate this issue. This is about uh, accumulation system. It was raised and decisions were taken. But there were many delays about the deficit of a pension fund. I would like to show to you this graph. This is uh, the process of the fund. We had critical situation in 2016 
when the single monetary contribution was uh, decreased two times and uh, the process decreased, then we compensated them, and now the deficit is about 11.4% to the process of the pension fund, their own uh, proceeds. This is the main, uh, the single monetary contribution and money from operations with, uh, with uh, from transactions uh, concerning uh, um, real estate property. And we, if we look at the budget of the pension fund in relation to GDP, then uh, it is it doesn't look so big this year. 0.9 this year, um, uh, two and a half uh, was a situation in uh, um, 2016. Unfortunately, it um, uh, fell to 11.2. To some extent, it uh, shows that this correlation, uh, so the deficit is not so big and not so critical. Own proceeds, and why there is difference between own proceeds and the budget, except uh, own proceeds, they get uh, money from the state budget. Uh, in some categories, uh, is, uh, uh, so these are servicemen, judges, they have average pension 52,000. They do not have limitations. Also, prosecutors' office, uh, also prosecutors, they do not have limitations concerning pensions. Others have li these limitations. So, I corrected information for 2021 from the state budget. 195.3 billion will be provided from the budget to the pension fund in order to provide for these categories and uh, to cover the deficit of the budget. Uh, and what will be the budget of the pension fund that will be adopted, approved in January, because it is not included in the state budget. And in January, by the provision of the Cabinet of Ministers, this will be done, and then we will have the, pro the figure. Now, uh, we do not know even uh, approximate figure. And one more thing that I would like to mention. Uh, uh, in the pre-election program uh, disclosed by the uh, Servant of the People Party, uh, there was a possibility of a, a, a lump legalization of cam capital, some non-criminal origin. Uh, uh, and taxation of the um, privileged rate. Uh, while uh, this was in the program, but now we do not hear any such uh, uh, statements. Uh, the while the data of our Ministry of Economy suggests that our shared economy amounts to 31 percent, although many other experts believe that this is a very optimistic figure. Um, uh, but the shrink of uh, shared economy from 31% uh, of GDP to 20% immediately would allow to get um, a deficit-free budget of the pension fund of Ukraine. And uh, uh, and the experts in the uh, research and legal department of Verkhovna Rada uh, uh, study the possibility to support the pays uh, two systems, uh, two pension systems uh, simultaneously pay as you go and the accumulative system. Split. This is the word that. Uh, uh, became very widely used uh, since July 2020. Back in 2019, I participated in the drafting of the um, draft law on split, uh, uh, but 
uh, now uh, then the new, uh, another different version was submitted over home narada mm, uh, uh, so uh, that uh, law originally primarily was passed back in uh, 2015 with big difficulties uh, then in uh, 2019 the new version of it was produced uh, so this was uh, the first law that was that entered the plenary room without preliminary committee um, scrutiny and uh, immediately in the plenary room uh, uh, it immediately became the um, uh, the uh, object for debate uh, what does it mean split uh, split, uh, we uh, mean here three regulators, the National Bank, the National uh, Committee on Financial Services, which was uh, um, abolished, and uh, uh, its functions were split between the c uh, Commission on uh, Stock Markets and uh, uh, NBU. Uh, so they accumulate pension funds uh, uh, fold within uh, responsibility of the uh, state committee on the stock markets. That is non-governmental pension funds, uh, how they are called, uh, and all related to registration uh, was uh, the, in the center of that law. It not just divided the functions, but unfortunately, the draft law was passed a bit late. In 2014, we, we believed that uh, we were able to um, to launch uh, changes uh, uh, quickly, but it did not happen. Now I will shift to the financial instruments uh, at the Commission website. I have uh, found what uh, instruments were used by the National Commission. Due to the law on uh, derivatives, uh, the law on the currency operations, uh, um, uh, uh, foreign securities, securities of foreign states, uh, the law on derivatives existed, but uh, um, it was not widely used. So this is the list of those instruments that uh, uh, could be applied by the National Commission on Securities. Uh, there are some uh, risky instruments related to listings, uh, low quotations, uh, uh, etc. So these uh, instruments are aimed at preserving the accumulated funds. Uh, uh, accumulated uh, uh, monetary funds in the pension accumulating pension fund. All that is done to uh, ensure as low inflation rate as possible. So the minimal objective is uh, to preserve pension uh, investments and uh, maximal objective should be to, to uh, increase them. Natalia has not shown some figures which uh, are too big. Uh, looking at the OSC webs, uh, sorry, not OSC, but uh, economic. Uh, 
uh, OECD uh, organization. I looked at Denmark, at the Netherlands, uh, where they have something like 180, 170 percent to GDP in the private pension funds. Why in Ukraine this is just 0 0.1 percent of GDP. That's quite understandable because we haven't launched the secondary level. Uh, we launched partially the tertiary level uh, it was uh, uh, created back in 2001 and uh, um, it's actually is working but uh, s slowly I have analyzed all those instruments how they worked in the uh, uh, stock market uh, uh, and compare them uh, uh, between the years you may look at the um, dynamics of this uh, joint stock contracts with uh, um, securities in the split of financial instruments. Uh, but actually uh, there is no split because this uh, salad green color uh, is about uh, um, bills actually mm. uh, so uh, uh, in this graph you see the ratio of uh, joint stock uh, contracts uh, to secure uh, with the securities to GDP, and you can observe the um, definite uh, slowdown. Then I tried to look at uh, 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 other instruments uh, except. Uh, uh, except uh, t bills uh, and uh, that uh, ref that pink color shows uh, uh, light pink color shows deleted uh, uh, solid green color and uh, here you see definitely that uh, there is uh, uh, not so many things which uh, are productive in terms of GDP because the bills do not uh, increase GDP. So this is uh, the graph showing a relation between uh, or, uh, uh, joint stock contracts with uh, securities uh, without T bills uh, to GDP. I understand that uh, uh, not so many researchers or scholars try to do this analysis, but uh, uh, it is quite uh, uh, useful. Uh, uh, you should understand that uh, these figures do not impress you with its positive dynamics. Uh, uh, the uh, amount of uh, uh, assets uh, uh, issued by uh, 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 not issued but the uh, Deposited by physical entities, by physical persons, amount to 1.39 percent of GDP. This is the degree how people trust the system and how people understand that uh, the money should be invested. Those draft laws which are submitted to the parliament, uh, they provide not, uh, 
not that the state will manage this pension funds, but uh, that uh, there would be companies, man management companies for those pension funds, but the government uh, will control. Then I tried to look at the uh, non-state pension funds, uh, and I found just uh, bits and pieces of information that they, besides uh, a quarter uh, uh, yearly uh, e updating of investors, they started to inform the investors daily. But actually, the Commission of Financial Services uh, website uh, contains the register uh, is now non-operational and unfortunately it was uh, not uh, transferred to the new regulator which uh, um, uh, gained uh, the functions of the uh, State Financial Services Commission. I have uh, found uh, the uh, most uh, uh, fresh out of all available um, uh, informational sources about uh, non-state uh, pension funds. We have 63 non-pension funds and 22 administrators. The general number of uh, um, participants amount to 878,000 of people, and 84,000 of people, 10% of the general number of participants are now dating uh, uh, are now getting pensions uh, the uh, general amount of assets uh, formula uh, accumulated by the non-government funds amounts to to uh, 3,106 uh, million hryvnia, which is uh, uh, higher than in the previous year. Also, I made an attempt uh, to show uh, where the uh, uh, non-government, non non-state pension funds are invested. Uh, mainly, they are invested in the um, internal government bonds or treasury bills, so to say. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 all the rest of uh, uh, items are almost negligible, uh, like uh, mm, uh, securities of enterprises uh, uh, issued uh, uh, and securities issued by the residents of Ukraine, etc. The most uh, recent information I found uh, on the website of Ukrainian Association of Investment Business, uh, who uh, have posted their analysis by the end of uh, third quarter of this year. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, report clearly shows that uh, um, the uh, quarter growth had uh, slowed down, and uh, that uh, uh, amount of securities in the general uh, investment portfolio has dropped down to. Mm, this uh, is uh, the general overview of the uh, securities uh, administration in Ukraine. Yeah. 
I will start another part and then I will finish. Uh, last week, I saw the news that Ukraine, uh, if you take the open data maturity report, in the six open data maturity report, Ukraine has gained 84 percent, which is higher than general uh, or average result about uh, open data in Europe. Uh, actually, that uh, draft law uh, contributed much to this uh, uh, high figure, um, and I am proud that I was among the drafters. Actually, it was uh, uh, the uh, not just one law, but uh, several uh, laws. So that law um, uh, produced this positive result. We have on our own unified uh, portal of uh, open data. Mm. Uh, we have unified state web portal of open data with 79% uh, open uh, impact of open data in uh, different spheres, 72%, and the quality of data is also rather sufficiently high. I like very much this uh, graph. Here you see Ukraine, where Ukraine is uh, uh, Ukraine is comparable to the United Kingdom in terms of uh, um, the um, in the reforms that we had implemented. So, although the outcome of the reforms proved not to be very uh, prompt, uh, uh, but after six years of the reforms of the implementation, we can see that, yes, they work. Uh, uh, I looked at Chile. And this system became the best in Chile, not due to the, not only due to the pension reform, but uh, uh, due to uh, a set of reforms which created synergy in a better pension provision. I would like to point out that open data will produce uh, a good effect. Uh, uh, this information is available for all the citizens in uh, uh, machinery format. It allows uh, uh, prompt uh, processing of information. Uh, uh, curb corruption, etc. We have a web portal, open data, data.gov.ua, and here on that portal, I have not found uh, data about state data provision. So till now, on this uh, portal, you can uh, find 16 data sets from the National Commission of uh, Financial Services Market and 16 sets of data from the National uh, Commission on Securities. Uh, there is also a good uh, uh, web portal uh, of a budget for the citizens, uh, which is called open budget. Uh, it would be good to create similar uh, um, portal for citizens uh, uh, about uh, pension funds. So the major objective here is to gain trust of people. The trust to market should be built by the regulator. And uh, in order to do this, the regulator should gain trust of the society. And uh, uh, 
this should be started from the proper information on the website. I had been uh, working for Microsoft for several years. I worked in the tax inspection, creating softwares. Uh, it was my idea to introduce tax codes. And I was a chairperson of two departments in tax administration, creating that system of tax codes. So the web portal should not look like as a, a big uh, or, or, or dump waste uh, of information, uh, uh, sorry, waste dumps of information. Uh, it, it information quite easily uh, can become a waste information. Uh, you can find a lot of information on the uh, Commission on Securities website, and uh, nevertheless, that information is not useful. What I uh, recommend to uh, to watch at uh, here on this link, you can find statistical data, statistical tables for. For example, this uh, data shows that 50, more than $50 trillion are now in pension funds. Uh, uh, here we have the freshest rating about uh, reliability of pension systems. The Netherlands, uh, uh, Finland, uh, Denmark, they are good. This is a good resource to understand what they are doing. If you are interested, you may go there to these resources and use them. Thus, you will raise the trust to the pension system. The most important uh, is the raising trust, transparency, and predictability of the. Um, Uh, uh, pension system and state uh, non-government uh, uh, funds uh, should create uh, uh, should create uh, 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 provisional scenarios. Uh, actually, all those uh, things which you hear here, trust, transparency, predictability, responsibility, are all interrelated. Thank you, Yaroslav. Everybody who is interested either in numbers or infographics, uh, you would be able to find it uh, on the ANTS website, and you will be able to ask additional questions. Now I'm pleased to give the floor to uh, the Member of Parliament and expert on economic development of Ukraine to Mr. Yaroslav Zelezniak. Are you connected, Mr. Zelezniak? Uh, I am not at the head of the Committee on Economic Policy. I'm first deputy. Sorry, yeah, first deputy. I hope that we will start with a positive note. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for organizing this online meeting. It is really important to discuss such issues because uh, some reforms are discussed for a long time, but uh, implementation is lacking. And the reform of the pension system is an important reform in the sector of finances. Many speakers before me 
spoke about this issue, what happened during the last years, what uh, changes were introduced into legislation, and how we voted split and long awaited law on derivatives. We did it really fast, and many things will be updated. So next year, we are going to work on this issue further. And uh, I would like to speak about the position of voice party in the parliament concerning this issue. As you may know, during the last uh, one and a half years, there are many laws that created obstacles uh, that uh, they were changed. And the first was uh, the introduction of split. And further discussion is needed with the National Bank, with the Commission, with the colleagues from the Ministry of Finances and the colleagues from the Parliament the, about the law on financial services. There were several ideas. They were not finalized. First, it was to introduce several laws concerning financial services, but the number of these laws constantly changed. Five or seven laws. And uh, also the issues of split uh, should be also included properly into legislation. I won't to go into detail, we had meetings with our colleagues in the groups, and the second idea that appeared in the committee, and I believe it is more realistic but difficult to implement, is to create a new big law on the Code of Financial Services. and. Uh, to envisage different areas in one law. We may adopt one law without changing and creating some legislative collisions and to introduce more um, viable financial market. But this procedure is more difficult because then you need to have uh, everything prepared uh, quickly, but this law would take more time to prepare. And uh, this issue is in delay because uh, uh, leadership of National Bank, uh, there are changes in the leadership uh, of the National Bank, and uh, we have the cooperation with the profile committee, and uh, this cooperation should be intensified. Andrei Minchuk is the new head of the subcommittee on banking. He joined Andrei Matlevich and other colleagues who are on this committee. I hope that in 2021, we will meet not only at such conferences, but also in the working groups, and we will be able to discuss this law. And in several years, maybe even uh, faster, it will be adopted. So you remember there was one more draft law that uh, didn't reach the second reading. It was adopted in the turbo regime. But there were some uh, con concerns about this draft law. Maybe we'll introduce ch some changes into this law, changes of technical character, and uh, we will discuss it further with other, with our international colleagues. And one more important thing: uh, this draft law on uh, um, funded uh, um, s pension system. The draft law was uh, um, submitted by Ms. Tritekova. 
she was a great proponent of this uh, funded system. Now, uh, this document was not on the agenda of the committee and the Verkhovna Rada because of lack of time and communication and the coordination of concept. I would like to say that in the whole of the Verkhovna Rada and uh, when I speak with my colleagues, with the people's deputies, uh, I believe that this issue is not properly communicated. When we think the Prime Minister who lectured people on the problems of um, pension fund, but maybe many people didn't perceive the speech well, but this uh, intensified the discussion concerning the introduction of the funded pension system. And uh, as a people's deputy, I may say that during this week, uh, uh, on different channels, in different media outlets, they discuss this issue. This is on the agenda. But uh, now this, the interest uh, a little bit dropped, and uh, here we need proper discussions and communication. We are trying to explain to our colleagues, even in our factions, we try to explain why it will reflect positively, not only in the on pensioners, it will reflect positively on the market, and we speak about pluses and minuses. And also we have the proponent uh, of the system, Taras Kazak. He also provides communication of this topic. These are positive things. Second, I do not see uh, the support from the cabinet of ministers. Maybe I do not know with this topic in depth, but I see that many colleagues, uh, Andrei Matavila, Galina Tretikova, and other colleagues, they are proponents of this idea in the parliament. They come to people and ask uh, opinions, but I do not see big promotion of this idea by the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine. I'm deeply convinced that such important structural things should go from the government whether we voted as coalition or as opposition, this is lacking. It looks like separate initiative of an individual um, deputies, and uh, in previous convocation, several deputies promoted this topic, and we believe that this t topic should be on the agenda. And the third question, is about implementation. For the majority of our colleagues, uh, this introduction of the funded system this is not about the mechanism of control. There are manipulations. They say that there will be some private pr funds. No one uh, will be able to control. The money will be stolen. This will be like MMM. You know all these myths. I see a big problem in the fact that we do not know who will pay for the system when we will introduce it. Uh, this is a powerful uh, argument of our colleagues. No one has answer for this. Uh, no one has systemic approach to this topic. We should work more with our colleagues who work on the tax code. This is an increase of burden on employees or employers. And uh, we have big rate on the uh, earnings and uh, overall tax burden of uh, on um, employee so they uh, should decrease and 
some taxes should be should go to this funded system and this will increase the burden on business on employers and all employees and we will have negative result because of this so this is one problematic issue i see in the committee in the hall of the verkhovna rada and this is the idea that is the most difficult to communicate i know that there are several proposals to decrease tax burden and the idea to unite all the taxes in one payment a, a, a single monetary contribution military tax and other taxes uh, to decrease administrative and tax load. Maybe we should consider this window of opportunity to introduce proposals about obligatory uh, funded pension system. Maybe this will is the support for this uh, um, draft law, whether it will be a proposal of Galina Tritikova or other colleagues, this will be easier to promote this draft law, this idea. And also about supervision, about control. This time that we have between the introduction of split and provision of more responsibilities to the Commission and to the National Bank. Maybe we need to see that we will have this control. We should demonstrate it, that there are many um, uh, uh, leverages to prevent creation of some financial pyramids. And also, together with these tax uh, changes, uh, we may create this long-term plan to introduce the system. I hope that we will find solutions that will help people's deputies to more efficient uh, to resolve these topics in the next 2021. Uh, so, thank you for uh, taking part. I know that uh, now you have hearing of committee. Thank you very much for speaking with us. This issue is uh, one of the questions, uh, issues that are on the agenda of your committee, and there will be discussion between the committees, between the politicians, and I hope that uh, trilateral discussion is needed to find answers to those questions those questions you focused on. This is not only for deputies, but also for officials, representatives of commissions and experts. We as ANS representative, we are ready to organize such discussion platforms and to invite all stakeholders. Uh, so you said that there are no stakeholders. I see only one stakeholder who promotes this idea, the introduction of this funded pension system. This is the Ministry of Social Policy. Maybe your committee does not have uh, a sufficient cooperation with them. This is the only state body that to properly work on this topic. Maybe further discussions are needed with the Ministry of Social Policy. We will continue these discussions. Thank you very much for your participation. Now I would like to give the floor to Galina Tritiakova, People's Deputy Head of the Committee of the Verkhovna Rada concerning social policy, uh, the Committee on Social Policy and Protection of the Rights of Veterans. Before becoming the people's deputy, you were the person who uh, introduced split. And when you became the people's deputy, you introduced this uh, split. So, Galina, 
What should be the home task for the state regulator of uh, pension savings? What are the main three tasks that should be resolved by the regulator with uh, the broadened um, responsibilities? Thank you, Natalia, for this organization of the conference that you deal with this issue. Unfortunately, I'm not able to join all your events, but I really like your events. Thank you that you do this, and we thank Yaroslav. He is really professional, and he explained uh, how this uh, um, issue is considered by the parliament and other stakeholders. In order to introduce the second level of pension system, without which we won't be able to reach the level of uh, replacement, at least 40 percent, in order to reach 40 percent, and I would like that our pensioners uh, would be able to get more bigger percentage than what they get when they are employed. Without uh, accumulation of funds, it is not possible. And our committee considers this pension reform not uh, like um, a securities market. We believe that this is the derivative from what is being accumulated, loan money, loan funds. And uh, we consider this topic a social topic. And uh, the introduction of accumulation of funds with the participation of private sector, with private financial institutions, it is only possible when conditions are created. And they are created by the financial committee and the split we speak about. This is the creation, the split, this is distribution of financial services between two regulators, the National Bank and the National Commission on Securities and the Capital Market. But the matter is not only in distribution between regulators, but uh, in the fact that Ukraine cannot introduce this supervision when they have two regulators. Uh, so this uh, supervision uh, should be within one regulator, and I believe that in two or three years, We'll be able to have split two when we will separate uh, the functions from the National Bank, the functions of regulation of the uh, banks and non bank uh, institutions, credit institutions, and uh, insurers that are now under National Bank. So, split one, I would call it, this decision was uh, taken because supervision is costly in order to provide the uh, um, preservation of uh, fund and to return trust of population, we should uh, introduce this, this uh, supervision. Uh, so we should uh, have this uh, uh, credential um, uh, supervision. It has three pa pillars. I won't go into detail about financial things. Um, and I believe that uh, Tax and Financial Committee will deal with these issues, but uh, the split was the precondition uh, to create such a supervision uh, in non-banking community. And this uh, reform of creation of this uh, uh, supervision, it doesn't end with the split. Now in the committee, they consider the introduction uh, draft of draft law that uh, um, during previous cadence, uh, it has number 6303. Now it is updated and uh, it uh, got, uh, um, it was checked by international structures and uh, we had the letter from five international organizations from the World Bank, from uh, IMF, USAID, VRD, and the European community. And now this draft law was considered by the international community. It got okay and the National Com uh, Commission on Securities and the uh, Stock Market. This is not a legislative entity. It will be submitted uh, through committee. Now committee is considering this draft law. So there should be infrastructure created after the split and this draft law that I am really waiting for. It will be introduced during the next month in the parliament. Before we create this precondition, we should adopt the model in which we are going to create the second level uh, of a pension system. And uh, I believe that uh, the, the level 
of accumulation is not broad and is not efficient, is too small, because we didn't have the second level, and I consider the second level, first of all, as a driver to develop uh, this accumulation for the citizens of Ukraine. How this model be developed further, whether it will be obligatory in five or seven years. This will be decided by the future political forces. In 15 years of introduction of Polish system, Poland three times changed the model of um, accumulation of pension funds. And I believe that for Ukrainian communities, for economists, for macroeconomists, this is a challenge. And we will have such a necessity to modernize these laws that we introduce, because often I mentioned that um, this is a good law in Germany concerning regulation of uh, securities um, uh, insurance market, and up to four amendments are introduced to this law. Uh, that system, financial system, I mean, um, is uh, uh, highly developed in the uh, in uh, Germany. Uh, my personal opinion: how we could accumulate uh, uh, pension funds. Natalia knows that, but uh, what can we do for? Ukrainian citizens should be able to accumulate funds in different types of financial institutions. We should be able to accumulate money in banks, on bank deposits. Bank system has prudential supervision. So we may advise Ukrainians to accumulate on bank accounts. So we may offer um, uh, uh, Ukrainians to accumulate funds in the authorized secondary pension funds and also the uh, life insurers upon uh, 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 due diligence and scrutiny in the National Bank. Yesterday, we discussed whether the National Bank package is ready to uh, launch this work with life insurers. Uh, this will be a set of amendments uh, to uh, the law on insurance, on the um, financial instruments. So all those uh, amendments to legislation will open many possibilities for Ukrainians to use many financial instruments for accumulation of uh, money. Um, with the draft law, we understand that it was uh, provocative, actually. The major problem, which seems, uh, which seems to be resolved, uh, was the source of uh, formation of accumulated uh, money. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, all the previous uh, laws used only the pockets of uh, um, employees uh, to uh, accumulate money. And uh, in all those drafts, it was between 2 and 7 percent from, from wages without no indication how to increase that. There was even a suggestion to deduct 15 percent from the income of Ukrainian employees and accumulate it in the uh, pension funds. While I believe that this uh, accumulation should be done equally, um, by an employee and employer uh, in line with the formula plus one. That is, an employee uh, may uh, choose the accumulation percentage and employer uh, pays uh, the same uh, rate plus one. Uh, this is a not a new system. It was used in the UK. Uh, 
So, uh, uh, Vladislav is right that without cabinet of ministers, we would be unable to introduce all that systemic things which we uh, provide in our new laws. Um, in practice, we had discussions many times in today, Denis Anatolievich understands what should be done to launch the second level. And of course, the major stakeholder is the Ministry of Social Policy, but the Pr Prime Minister's idea was uh, to find the source of uh, accumulations within the um, uh, uh, pay, uh, two percent of payroll tax and uh, uh, two percent of uh, um, uh, the uh, personal income tax. In Armenia, when uh, when they started to follow two plus two plus two percent. Uh, um, uh, and uh, it immediately was implemented, especially on the employer's uh, um, side. When uh, uh, we start speaking about the payroll tax, and uh, um, they immediately start just saying that it is not possible, it is not possible to vote for this draft law. So we started to draft the blocks. I will mention these blocks to you, and later you will start discussions uh, uh, on block uh, by block. So uh, Ministry of Social Policy will provide the block 2.2. Uh, this is uh, the law about uh, general compulsory social insurance. The source is uh, 2 plus 2. We will see what will happen when we launch it. Then the draft law uh, provides that this system should be launched uh, from 2023. I read somewhere that the Prime Minister wants to launch it this year, but we need time to build up infrastructure, and we had created a road map where we know step by step who will do what at what time. The second block is to be prepared by Timur Hramayev in the National Committee on Securities and Security and the Markets. Uh, he works uh, on the problem of uh, silent agents. We do not understand what she what she means. So we will do for Ukrainian citizens silent entities. We will organize a awareness campaign to prevent that people are indifferent. Uh, in uh, uh, choosing the uh, pension funds. Helena, uh, I'm sorry to stop you. We go beyond the time limits. You have 40% to finish, uh, 40 seconds to finish. And the central administrator who will be created as an organic monopolist, uh, to prevent erosion of capitals, and the fourth block to be drafted by the bank community. This is a, a possibility to uh, involve bank deposits to investment uh, funds. And this will be 2386D uh, draft. 
draft law which will be submitted to the parliament thank you galena for joining our discussion your committee is the leading in uh, this area, you have uh, cooperation with the government, but uh, I understood from our discussion that we have to cooperate with you and with other colleagues, uh, uh, with your colleagues in peace. We are ready to become such a platform for broad discussions, so I invite you to join our discussions. Out of that uh, 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 information that I heard that you have uh, much to say, and next year we will discuss it once again. Perhaps next year we will start discussion. So I wish you success. Uh, please remember that uh, uh, non-state pension funds are following you very close, uh, closely. With this, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Timur Khramayev, who is a chairperson of the uh, National Commission on Securities and uh, um, uh, uh, Security Markets. And uh, uh, um, would you add to what Yaroslav mentioned and to what MPs uh, contributed? So my first uh, question to you what are the first results of split what are major um, conclusions out of that uh, reform which you had implemented I would like to remind you that we have seven minutes we are beyond our time frame now we cannot hear you we cannot hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Something is with the internet connection, so let us now give the floor to Viktor Kaziuk. Mm. Uh, he is a uh, uh, doctor of economic science professor um, from the Western Ukrainian National University and member of the NBU board. Uh, Mr. Kazuk, my question to you, what are major or what uh, uh, how split had changed the functions of NBU as uh, a regulator in the pension provision area, and uh, and what is the role of monetary policy in it? Uh, you have seven minutes. Thank you for invitation to this uh, discussion. In many cases, uh, this topic is uh, interrelated with the specific narration the, um, that uh, uh, non-government pension funds, which are not compulsory, they will accumulate uh, good uh, 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 asset resource. Uh, but let us look closely at this uh, uh, phenomenon. It might be successful only the economic uh, 
uh, objects uh, would trust the system that their uh, savings are protected uh, from inflation and protected from fraud in financial uh, institutions uh, in order to protect that uh, uh, funds uh, from uh, uh, mo uh, in monetary sense there should be price uh, uh, stability and uh, this price stability is uh, impossible without this broad discussion of the role of NBU in that uh, and uh, 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 with the proper regulation. What do I mean? In this or that way, split has uh, increased the concentration of responsibilities, uh, which are split between two agencies. But I, uh, uh, he, here I mean not only the concentration of responsibilities, but also the concentration of functions. If you lay some responsibilities on NBU, we should clearly determine how the supervision functions uh, uh, correspond to the monetary policy, uh, micro uh, uh, policy, micro financial, po not macro, but micro financial policy, etc. And uh, looking under this angle, we immediately find what Galina has mentioned whether any alternative model of supervision over uh, financial institutions uh, uh, will be effective. The e excessive concentration of responsibilities uh, increases political value, political reputation of one of the mm, regulators. On the other hand, uh, Financial um, separation of a regulator, where there is a synergy between macroeconomic uh, policy and uh, um, regulation, we clearly see that in today's conditions, uh, further uh, steps in split may result. Uh, uh, in financial uh, consequences, financial metabolism of uh, regulators. I would like to focus attention uh, where to invest. Perhaps Tipu Timur will say more about where to invest. I would like to point out to another problem. Let's assume there are three non-government uh, um, uh, pension funds, and uh, let's assume that uh, uh, 100 million hryvnia uh, of uh, uh, savings come to the market. Of course, it will change competition conditions in the market, and uh, we will immediately um, have the problem with the anti uh, regulation and uh, not understanding what to do with that compulsory savings. Uh, and perhaps we will have the concentration, the market concentration issue at the, mm, uh, in the market. This is a huge problem because between the uh, the actions of the National Bank, uh, the uh, curve of profitability uh, mm, and uh, um, uh, here we can find very serious problem uh, seeing the concentration in the market which will distort the um, uh, mm, uh, uh, curve, profitability curve in the market, then this uh, will immediately reflect on the uh, curve of uh, um, profitability for, of investments. So this uh, um, 
brings us to serious concerns uh, um, about uh, uh, the degree how uh, uh, how uh, so uh, uh, about uh, uh, future changes how in introduction of the second level will influence the uh, savings market and uh, there should be a good balance between what will be paid by employers and what will be paid by employees. Uh, we should not account uh, that we will be able to introduce uh, um, the second level, not cutting down the um, single social contribution for e employers. Uh, we uh, lose uh, the competition for investments for FDI, uh, having such high social contributions in the country. Investors are uh, deterred uh, from uh, coming to Ukraine because our payroll tax and our social contributions are extremely high. So we shall think how to cut down the payroll tax uh, and uh, gradually increase uh, the share to be paid by the employees. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Victor. So you stated that was said by Galina and what was mentioned by Yaroslav about the model itself, who should pay, the employer, employee, or maybe the state. There is such an option. This will be the next topic of our discussion. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give the floor to Timur Khramaev. I introduced him already. He is the head of the National Commission on Securities and the Stock Market. Are you with us? Yes, I hear you well. Do you hear me? Yeah. Now we do. So, this, uh, so we are speaking about commission today a lot because you are the main regulator in the market of uh, non-state uh, uh, pension securities and you are the head of the relevant commission. Timur, I would like to repeat my question about the first results of split. What are the main conclusions you are able to make? And maybe you will respond to what previous speakers say. I know that you were listening carefully to what they were saying. You have seven minutes. Thank you. I would like to show several pictures to you, but first I would like to answer your question. And I will comment on the previous speakers. First of all, we had the significant changes. The split was adopted, but as Galina said, this is a simplification of administrative uh, supervision. This is liquidation of one of the bodies and distribution of functions between the National Bank and uh, our commission. And uh, no changes were introduced into the system of regulation concerning non-banking sector. So now we have active legislative process uh, on submission of the National Bank and uh, uh, the uh, deputies, as uh, Mr. Zelizniak mentioned and Galina mentioned, um, 6303 draft law. It will be submitted to the parliament. And this is about the system of supervision uh, of uh, the market of capital um, to bring this uh, to the world standards and I like to speak about it. Uh, unfortunately, this is not an uh, uh, optimistic topic because we are the only country in Europe that doesn't have a proper level of regulation of non-banking sector. One of uh, 10 countries in the world that doesn't have it. About split, as of today, we completed all the functions connected with the getting this responsibility, archives, and systems that Yaroslav mentioned, and we transfer 
also the collection of information and provision of information to the regulator to relative uh, new processes. Because quality of information that we get and previous commission got from the those who were under supervision, this quality does not uh, meet the requirements. Uh, during the last three months of the participants of the market, uh, they got prepared to submit information quickly and uh, more disaggregated in order that we be able to see what they do in these markets. So I don't believe that split, but for a long time, and I will open my presentation now. So we needed a lot of time to reach these results. There were many attempts. And uh, we wanted to to reach the split for five years. When we started, we believed that we will have it in one year, but uh, simple administrative change took five years. It looks like we made too much effort. So I'm going to speak about our goals and what we will have in the new six uh, uh, 2303, and uh, we believe that it will be registered next month, uh, and this will be a precondition, a regulatory precondition, what we should do in order to launch secondary level. Draft law that is in the parliament now, it will be discussed, social aspects will be discussed, and about the sources, about fun uh, functioning conditions. So the, uh, so we now supervise uh, the market to get information from the um, uh, proper bodies. This uh, market is not really big about regulation. In 2018, we audited ourselves in accordance with your standards. And uh, in order to prove and uh, to provide documentation of uh, maybe some non-compliance, there should not be just some um, judgment of some people. We should have proper methodology of assessment of the uh, current situation, what we got. We used the 10 principles, and the picture doesn't look good. We need to have all green rounds, and we have six functions that are partly implemented or not implemented at all. So they are really significant. They include such important aspects as independence, sufficiency of resources, efficiency of uh, uh, responsibilities. There should be risk orientation, supervision should be risk oriented, proportionality and um, uh, cohesiveness and all the measures that are used, they should be proportional to the scope and consequences of their actions. So this is self-assessment. And we demonstrated what drawbacks we have, unfortunately. Commission doesn't have enough resources. We are financed through the budget and also about the procurement of the systems and procurement of quality of supervision. We lack money for this, and we are not able to motivate people with a salary. We have this proportion with the national bank, with the ministry. The level of pay of salaries 
is at the level of those bodies who have several functions, for example, agency on forests, uh, management. So this is our level. Unfortunately, we cannot provide uh, improve, uh, refresher trainings so, or um, we do not have proper level of salaries. Risk-oriented approach. I would like to say that, for, for example, we wanted not to have these. Uh, uh, we want to have risk-oriented approach in our supervision, and uh, not to have this assessments. We want to recommend not to punish. Uh, entities and in this way to decrease risks. So these are overall conclusions. I will provide more information to you. This draft law that we discuss now with the deputies, uh, this is like 6303 that was last system, season. It was uh, uh, it uh, should include EOS principles. This is international uh, international principles of the regulators of the securities markets. And I mentioned these principles before. IMF mentioned that uh, the regulator should uh, be established properly to um, oversee the activities on the market. So we should be brought to an appropriate level, and this is included in IMF program, and this is there for the last three years. About our partners, they say that we should provide the efficient functioning of the system of accumulation of funds, we should resolve this question with this issue. Uh, B2B and uh, pension funds uh, had some problems. Those that invested and lost them, the money of the, those who invested and the number of uh, uh, these uh, entities we had uh, 100 and so some of them merged, some of them just stole money. This is about 30% of those funds that we have at the third level. So this is the example. We should not lose money. Money loss is sometimes grave violation of rules, and this may really harm and it may bring big problems to the system that should function for tens of years. I will be glad to answer to all your questions. There are many questions to you, but unfortunately we won't be able to ask you because we have four more participants and we have only 15 minutes for all of them. But maybe we will send these questions to you and we will get answers. Maybe we will have discussions through Facebook or we will continue our discussion later on concerning those topics that were of top priority. We thank you for your participation, for your presentation. Could you share your presentation with us and we will place it on our page. We will place analysis from Yaroslav there as well. I would like to give the floor now to Olga Bandarenka, Left Help uh, Cha Let's Help Charity. Uh, this is for geriatric uh, institutions. Uh, and. Uh, um, Mutual help uh, charity uh, uh, council head. Please, uh, could you uh, tell us your opinion on what I said before? I will be really practical. Thank you very much for organizing this important discussion. 
on the topic of uh, the work of the regulator. Last time we had a fruitful discussion about the necessary steps that should be done by the state to introduce obligatory um, uh, accumulation of funds, uh, so pension fund, and all the myths that existed. I would like to say that everyone understands the importance of those, the step, and they are waiting acti uh, for active steps uh, to adopt this law in the parliament. I would like to briefly say to Yaroslav Zhirilizniak that the cabinet of ministers is the only body as of today that really motivate deputies to take proper steps. Uh, and uh, they are uh, the important stakeholders of this draft law. The main uh, delay is in the Committee of Social Policy and Galina. You should uh, listen to this carefully because, unfortunately, you consciously uh, delay this process and this harms people. And I say this as a person who deals with charity, who help pensioners. This harms our society. This is really need an important step. I would like to speak more about the efficiency of the work of regulator in the sphere of provision of pensions. This is a very important issue to introduce the new system. I am the head of a charity that is called Mutual Help, and I will speak about practical things we face each day. These are not just hypotheses. As a council, we um, select the highly qualified partners who serve our fund, and the administrators and the bank. And uh, we as a council meet online. Now, yesterday we had a meeting offline in office, and we discussed the results of our activity and the weekly, weekly respond to events we face. Uh, the format of the meeting in this case uh, doesn't have any meaning. And in uh, August, uh, we needed to approve important decision for our fund, changes uh, of one of our partners, because we started to get uh, uh, addresses from our stakeholders that the administrators didn't provide quality services. This connection from online cabinets, they were not able to see uh, the accounts uh, and also the rejection to open accounts. Uh, and also, administrator also didn't provide consultations. Uh, the administrator knew that uh, we wanted to replace him and started to harm the activity and reputation uh, to harm the reputation uh, of our entity. And we as a council took the decision to replace the partner. We signed a new agreement with the lo uh, proper tariffs, and uh, we started to change uh, this administrator. I won't take much time. It, this process was really difficult. Previous administrator created obstacles at each step. They didn't provide all the documents or uh, also provided some files with errors. Um, so the, these are technical details. The motivation was like this. Uh, the, uh, he wanted us to pay $5,000. And this is illegal to do this. And we as a council, and me personally, I actively participate in the process of transfer of the fund. And we have seen the violations of the at each step. And I addressed for help to our regulator, to the commission and to the fund. I addressed several times to help us to resolve this problem. I sent all the data all the messages and even phone calls. I um, provided requests uh, for the sanctions. 
against the violator because uh, this behavior of administrator may discredit all the market. And we, cal we uh, relied on our regulator, uh, and it should stop violations of legislation. Our administrator also filed request to the commission, and uh, he forgot the uh, six requests. This was September. Now we have 23rd of December. We didn't get any response. Nine requests to commission were filed. We do not have any answers. Please tell me what our regulator works efficiently. And all these indicators, uh, green, Red, you may show it to yourself or your two international partners to report uh, for, for your grants, but uh, you should look at practical things we face each day. We didn't sign uh, the act of transfer of fund. We involved best specialists in order to resolve the situation, in order to do less harm for us. To us, we didn't do any harm. Neither we didn't harm us or other participants. But this was done by our own forces without any help from the regulator. Why money of taxpayers spam uh, for the activity of regulator, and uh, why do you have uh, so many grants if you do not help? I would like to have answer for this. I told you about the example of an action of commission, and each forum and each discussion, we see beautiful presentations and pictures. I would like to add one more thing. I would like to recognize and to stress that the regulator is inefficient in its activity. Please give me two more minutes. I would like to compare two regulators that were with the participants of the split. This is the National Bank and the National Commission. I would like to share my screen, please. I would like to show. I would like to show the site of the National Bank and the site of our regulator. The National Bank that got prepared to split, and they created a separate section. They started in April, even in March. To inform the market, to create white papers, they informed on future regulation of the market of crediting by financial companies, factory market and uh, other markets. They got prepared for this. On the 7th of October, they published the guidelines, the manual for non-financial, non-banking financial institutions. And we cannot find it in our commission. This is the basic information about legislation, the model of decision taking. And I advise you to look at the site of the commission and try to find at least something concerning non-state pension funds. Sorry, but I believe I believe that our regulator harms the market of uh, uh, non-state support. I do not know whether they do it consciously or not. But I have a feeling that someone doesn't want to, to provide for the functioning of non-state pension funds in Ukraine. So we should think about this. It is really a pity that uh, one regulator works good and uh, we don't, uh, doesn't work properly, and we do not know uh, why our taxes are spent in such a way. This is uh, our practical uh, address. Thank you very much. So last time you participated in our event really actively and emotionally.
we see real emotions you cannot hide, and these emotions are transmitted through the screen. And Timur Khramayev, he is uh, continuing to watch it, and maybe he will provide some response. Unfortunately, time is lacking. We need to listen to three more speakers. I would like to, unfortunately, I will be able to give the floor to only one uh, speaker, Natalia Kavalyova. And she's the spe uh, specialist uh, on uh, uh, pensions. Uh, Emerit Ukraine um, fund uh, head of the board. And uh, uh, Natalia, you wanted to make some conclusions about what was said today. You have five minutes. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, Natalia, for the opportunity to participate in this event. I believe that the role of government in the introduction of the accumulated pensions. I believe this will be an element which uh, will ensure the long discussed guarantees for functioning of this system. The example provided by Olga, uh, it proves that almost ideal draft law which were able to produce this to the secondary level and uh, all the possible secondary legislation will be useless without proper regulation carried out by the regulators. We have a very uh, long and uh, difficult path for uh, formation of the non-government pension funds, uh, Paraspara Dastrum, and we remember the first convocation of uh, the um, uh, Securities Commission. Uh, this was uh, extremely professional people who had built up the system, but that enthusiasm and uh, um, uh, that uh, commitment uh, that people um, uh, applied at the uh, initial stage, gradually it, uh, um, it has uh, evaporated. Uh, whether split is good or bad, uh, nobody knows exactly. The international uh, research suggests that irrespective of the number of regulators that you have, uh, the quality of regulation is the most important. And uh, uh, they should uh, speak one voice and look in one direction instead of quarrels and fighting. Uh, there are uh, countries where they have just one regulator. We cannot cope with the scope of responsibilities, and uh, uh, there is a need to strengthen it. So the, the uh, issue is not in a number of regulators, but in the quality of regulations. I have heard uh, what Yaroslav Zelizniak said, uh, that there will be new text of the law on financial services, which will create new regulator, the Financial Services Market Commission introduced the, um, implemented the idea of a single regulator in the financial market, but in result of a long-term transformation, we have what we have now. Um, you can recollect all the story of the financial sector regulation. Coming back to our today's topic, uh, the uh, system of non-governmental pension system accumulations in Ukraine uh, is introduced, and this could be um, shared, uh, and this could be 
um, expanded on the secondary level, but about the second level, the success of the introduction of several level and the success of the further um, uh, operation of the third level um, will depend on the quality of public awareness campaign among people. Uh, as of now, we hear a lot of negative uh, things. Uh, 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 negative things about uh, non-government pension funds. In this system, we have a lot of positive cases, uh, uh, while uh, thefts uh, and uh, um, uh, those who did fraudulent actions, they um, existed always. It's not the fault of the financial sector. So it is important to which extent the government bodies are able to uh, prevent this. Hramaya mentioned that the uh, commission is not uh, sufficiently provided to func for functioning. Mm. This information raises concerns and fears when we will come to introduction of the second level because the state regulators who will deal with the pension provision at the second level of accumulating system should be carry out their functions continuously and not to be turned uh, into the mm, mm, training center for the market. Uh, uh, the, the stuff uh, outflows uh, from the government bodies to the um, market. Non-government pension funds and other financial market participants are interested in quality regulation of all their operations. We all we all know that uh, uh, one small detail may, detail may spoil the entire picture and. Uh, um, then demonopolization, protection of consumers' rights, introduction of asymmetric information, and uh, uh, all the key implementation of all the key tasks of the state will uh, will uh, allow to make our uh, state regulations. Uh, quality. Unfortunately, I have no possibility to say all that I wanted to say. That's why I will uh, be very happy that this our discussion will be just a first step in covering our very important topic. Thank you, Natalia. We had taken more time this this afternoon we have to finalize the discussion unfortunately we have to cancel two more speakers um, listed for today's discussion and this only emphasizes that we have to continue uh, this uh, um, discussion today we have heard politicians members of parliament we have heard the representatives of the national regulator there is uh, the NBU and the Committee on uh, Joint Stock Markets. Uh, we have heard representatives rep of the non-government pension funds uh, and uh, summing up the last uh, intervention. We should say that non-government pension funds, these are uh, private pension funds which uh, operate uh, 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 in line with Ukrainian legislation which protect 
uh, the uh, savings of employees who try to accumulate uh, uh, assets for their pensions. So the regulators, uh, um, those pension funds are um, happy to have uh, efficient regulators. So I invite you to further discussions. We will have further discussions next year. This is a very topical item which is uh, with which the broad public is not sufficiently familiar. I would like to thank to the Ukrainian Crisis Media Center for this opportunity to have discussion on your platform. And I would like to thank to our partner organization, ED European Fund for Support of Democracy, which supports the uh, answer uh, program and I invite the experts and uh, representatives of the state sector to uh, uh, join our